Chapter 20. Troth is quith. Where am I going? said Amy. Away from the warehouse door, said Rahul. OK, she said, sweeping the car left. Ah! went the other three again as they swung across their seats that way. But then what? She hung on as they rounded a couple of corners, faster than she'd like, the whole car leaning to one side, then the other. Remember the brake! Oh, yes! She pressed on the brake button. The car slowed down instantly and stopped on the edge of the industrial estate. An actual road lay ahead. Where do I go out of here? said Amy. Start the sat-nav, said Rahul. It's got your dad's work address in Scotland already preloaded. Amy turned it on. The screen lit up and said, Trathy twith. Pardon? said Amy. Trathy twith. Is he speaking backwards? said Janet. Sounds Welsh, said Jack. Yeah, said Rahul. It is. It's faulty. The voice commands offers you a number of languages, but this one's stuck in Welsh. Brilliant, said Amy. Rahul, what are you doing? They looked around. Sanjay had come outside with Rahul's mother, Prisha, who were both in dressing gowns and just looking very confused. Trouthies with, said the sat -nav. What does it mean? said Amy. I think it means give up now. This is never going to work, said Jack. Do you speak Welsh? said Rahul. Oh my, said Jack. This is going to be a long journey. Rahul, get out of that thing, shouted Rahul's mother. There's a picture on the sat-nav screen, said Janet, pointing with arrows. Amy did a double take. You mean a map? Of course there is. Thank you, Janet. Now I'm the stupid one. Pardon? said Janet. Nothing, said Amy. She peered at the screen. Left. It means turn left. Trouthy's with, said Jack. Obvious. Amy swung the steering wheel left and the car moved into the road. It was dark, but then she clicked the light switch and the blackness in front of her lit up. She moved the direction lever gently forward. Oh my days, she said, we're off. Jack was looking round. Not for long. Rahul's mum and dad are getting into their car. They're going to chase us and I imagine fairly soon catch us. Rahul shook his head. No, nah, they won't. Why not? I know my mum and dad. Very law abiding. Behind them, in their car, Rahul's mum turned to his dad. Come on, Sanjay, why are you not starting the car? They're driving away, Rahul and his friends are driving that strange thing away in the middle of the night. Prisha, have you put your seatbelt on? Oh, no, sorry. Where is it? Good question. They both looked around for a while for their seatbelts and then... When they realised their seatbelts weren't there anymore, they both looked out to see the back of the Taylor Turbo Chaser driving away. Chapter 21. That's nice. For a while, everything was fine. Amy drove along the road, the lights, which were brighter than she expected, illuminating their way in the darkness. Amy found that by carefully adjusting the direction lever back and forth, she could make the turbo chaser go at a constant, not too fast speed. Every so often, another car would come past and the driver would frown at them. But then, because this was a big city and all sorts could be seen on the roads, they would forget about it immediately and just drive on. It felt incredible to be driving along an actual road. The sat-nav kept barking out orders in Welsh because Rahul had programmed it to take the route with the least possible traffic, so they had to take the quiet little back roads. Plus, there was hardly anyone about because it was night, but still, it was so exciting. 
In fact, for a while, it looked like Rahul had thought of everything. For example, within five minutes, spatters appeared on the glass in front of Amy. Oh no, she said, it's starting to rain. Don't worry, click forward on the indicator stick. She did, and immediately, outside the glass, what looked to Amy like a bendy kitchen mop appeared and ran across the wet glass, soaking it up. Is that a bendy kitchen mop? Yeah. A windscreen wiper. Amazing. And then, I'm cold, came a voice from the back. Janet. Hmm. Wonder if that could be anything to do with the decision to wear a fairy costume with no sleeves, said Jack. I think it's probably something to do with that, actually, said Rahul. I'm cold, she said again. Don't worry. Rahul reached for a circular dial in front of him. It was a plastic one, and round it had been placed an arc of coloured tape. First blue, then red. He turned the dial so that it faced the red. Out of the floor behind the front seats in between Jack and Janet emerged a pole. At the top of the pole was a black hair dryer. Can you switch it on? said Rahul. It's battery powered, but I haven't worked out how to do that from the front. Jack blinked in amazement, but after a bit of fiddling around the handle to find the switch, he did so. Ah! He said, getting a blast of hot air in his face and closed his eyes. Sorry, you need to give it a slap. What? I can't hear you. Still blowing in my face. Give it a slap. Jack did so. Ow! You just hit me, said Janet. Sorry, said Jack, but I can't see. Janet tutted and slapped the hairdryer herself. And it started to revolve. Ah, <sighs> she said when it got round to her. That's nice. Rahul beamed with pride. He pointed to the dial. Heating system. Amy nodded. She pointed at the blue bit of tape. It can go cold as well. Rahul shook his head. No, that's just to look right. I see, she said. The journey seemed to be going really much more easily than Amy had thought it might do. She even decided to say this out loud. It's going much more easily than I thought it might do. If everything carries on like this, we'll be in Scotland by the morning. She looked at her watch. It was 1.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Dad wasn't leaving for Japan till Sunday. Loads of time. Yeah, definitely, said Jack. Amy didn't like the sound of that. Jack never said anything positive unless he was being sarcastic. Because one thing Rahul's parents will definitely do, continued Jack proving her right, is just sit in the car and wait for us to come back and not ring our mum or anything. Amy's stomach fell. Rahul frowned and shook his head. No, I think they might do that. Chapter 22. Something you might see in a cartoon. So, Mrs Taylor, said DCI Bryant, sipping the tea that Susie had made for him. They were sitting in the Taylor's kitchen, round their small breakfast table. It was the very early hours of Saturday morning. Your daughter is disabled? Yes. She had an accident a few years ago and broke her back and now she can't use her legs. What kind of accident? Susie's face, already clouded with worry, turned even darker. Her father was driving. It wasn't his fault. Another car was on the wrong side of the road and... Anyway, do you need to know all the details of that? Would it help find her? DCI Bryant blinked. No, I guess not. I'm sorry to intrude on a painful memory. Susie nodded. I imagine it was painful though, said PC Middleton. Susie looked over. 
PC Middleton was standing by, his notepad in hand. PC Middleton, said DCI Bryant wearily. A car crash. Ow. Susie frowned. That's not quite what painful means in that. Don't bother, Mrs Taylor, said DCI Bryant. I think it may be more important to tell you about the car, Mr Bryant, said Sanjay, who was also sitting around the table, as were Precia and Colin and Norma Warner, Janet's parents. It was pretty cramped, not least because Colin and Norma were both happy to spread themselves out on their chairs. The one they went away in, Sanjay said. The car? The children were kidnapped by someone driving a car? No, 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 said Precia. She was driving the car. Amy! DC Bryant turned to Susie. Your daughter, a child, was driving a car? It ain't a car, you big wazzock said Colin. No, it ain't Wazzock, said Norma. Excuse me, said PC Middleton. Please moderate your language, sir and madam. Do not call the detective inspector a Wazzock. Oh, what will you charge us with then? Yeah, charge us with what? Saying the word Wazzock in a built-up area. <laughs> Yeah, built up area. This seemed to be mainly what Colin and Norma did, what some people called bants, even though their daughter had gone missing. I should inform you, Mr and Mrs Warner, that I have written that down, said PC Middleton. Anyway, said DCI Bryant, this car, vehicle, whatever, the thing Amy was drunk, sir. Would you like to know how many Zs there are in Wazzock? There are 12, said Norma. Yeah, 12, said Colin. PC Middleton scribbled on his pad and then frowned. That looks a bit strange. Like how you would, you would write down the sound of someone sleep. Stop writing, Middleton, said DCI Brian. Are you sure, sir? Zip it, Middleton. Zip it. Right you are, sir. DCI Bryant sighed very heavily and then turned back to Precia. You were saying, Mrs Argawal. Yes, well, Colin and Norma are right. It wasn't a car, at least not a normal car. It was more like something you might see in a cartoon. A cartoon? What kind of cartoon? The Simpsons, Spongebob, Minions, Tom and Jerry, The Amazing World of Gumball. Yes, that's enough examples for now, Middleton. I don't know, said Precia, sort of like an old cartoon that had a car from the future in it. This is what it's like, said Susie, holding up her phone. DCI Bryant and PC Middleton peered at it. It's a photo my son took. I copied it onto my phone. Oh my goodness, said DCI Bryant. Hmm, said PC Middleton, holding his pencil up to the phone. Don't draw it on your pad, Middleton. No, sir? No, we have a photo here, so we don't need you to do a drawing. Right you are, sir. It kind of is like a cartoon car from the future in an old cartoon, said DCI Bryant. Thank you, said Precia. But it's different now, said Sanjay. The car, it's bigger and has new bits. But it does still basically look like this, said DCI Bryant. Sanjay looked at it and he nodded. And where do you think it they might be going? Everyone looked to Susie. She shook her head looked down and then after a little while looked back up. My guess, even though I don't want it to be true, Scotland, just past the border to be exact.
if you were investigating the disappearance of a child, what three questions do you think you could ask to get the best information? Look forward to finding out what you think.